Hey, I'm Tyler Borowski here in New York City at the Riven Entertainment Acting Studio, home of some of the upcoming Latino talent in the entertainment industry. And I got one of the stars right here. She's a member of the new Orange is the New Black season that's coming out this year in 2019. Agatha Celery, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. I'm glad to have you on. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Absolutely. So let's talk a little Orange is the New Black because it is seventh season coming up next yep. year. It's the final season. I know, a little, little sad Seven about that. Years. It's a long time. It's the most watched show, show on Netflix. Yes. How did that opportunity come about for you? Well, basically, Susan sent me the audition, and I went over there, and they brought me in, right? Mm -hmm. So they brought me in, and as soon as the lady came out, she's like, what's your agent's name? And I'm like, I have no clue, because they never <laughs> told me my agent's name, right? She's like, and then she said, like, a name, and she's like, I think I'm going to tell him how good you are. That's awesome. But we didn't yeah. really expect it. Mm. And then that same night, I had a dream that I got it. I don't know how, but I got a dream about it. And then the next day, I was in school. I came out of school. My dad told me. I didn't want to start crying in front of everyone, so I was just, oh like, holding the tears back. <laughs> right. Because, uh, you know, I didn't want to cry in front of everybody. He told me outside. I was happy. I was very works. happy. So, Agatha, before booking Orange is New Black, I mean, you were going to auditions for the last year and a half, yes. two years, not booking anything. Yeah, it Wh made me really sad and discouraged over almost so long. My mom would always say this, that, look at, like, for example, this famous artist, he was in New York for 12 years and didn't get anything, but I just felt like it wasn't part of me. I just was like, why don't I get anything? Because I was there for almost a year, two years, and I mm. didn't get anything, and it felt bad. But when I booked my commercial, I just, I thought that changed everything. Mm. I was, I started crying in the car. I was very happy. So it was something different for me to be booking the, the show. I love that. I love that, Agatha. When you're working on a show like that, it's a big production. Working on a show like Orange is the New Black Netflix, big time budget right there. What did you take away from your experience working on a show like that? It, I realized how big the camera was. It mm. was a huge camera. It was one of the biggest cameras. It was only one camera, but it was like really? probably so big that, and they told us not to look at the camera. Like, <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> no, because they, they, they wanted close-ups, and they're like, how do I not look at the camera? And then our mom says, which is Selene's Leva, mm. she's like, just look at me. I'm like, okay, but that'll be more difficult because it's right there right. In, the ca in the face, you know? <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, I'll try. And I did it without looking. They just told us not to look at the camera because then it doesn't look like you're really sure. acting. of course. Let me ask you, because you are so young, how did you even get to pursuing something like acting at a professional level at such a young age? Well, this, there was this show. It was called La Vendedora de Rosas. It was about this girl who was very poor who used to sell roses for money. And then it was about acting and that she became famous afterwards. And mm. I admired that. I thought that was cool. I thought I wanted to be like her. Mm. So one day we were watching, like, um, Telemundo with okay. her, and she was interviewing Jesus del Orden. We caught it at the last minute. The interview was completely over. So my dad called Telemundo and asked, What's her number? So we asked, and she told me to come over for an audition so she can interview mm -hmm. me. And she told me that I could enter. And I was so young, I was six years old. So it's been three years with Susan, because now I'm nine, and mm -hmm. it felt, and I was really lucky, and my grandma yeah. had gave me like a lucky bracelet, okay. and I thought it was the bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> Susan told me it was your talent, and I was happy. I was very, very happy, because yeah. I always wanted to be like her. I wanted mm -hmm. to see that because she was very poor in the move in the show, right? She was poor. She had to sell roses for money. Nobody would like accept her for <laughs> the roses. She had to persuade them into the roses, and then I don't really remember because that was three years ago. Okay. But then she became famous somehow, and I and she went to a red carpet wow. with her name on it, with people screaming her name, and I'm like, I want to be there one day. So what would you say is like a dream goal or dream accomplishment you want to do in this industry? I really just want for to be on a red carpet, for example. You know, like you know, like the Hollywood yeah. stars, for example. Yeah. I find that that's cool, but it's not really about the fame either. It's just about experiences. With when I did Orange Is the New Black, it was just like I want to do that. It right. was it was really interesting. You enjoy the experience, regardless. Yes. 
regardless, yes. And I never really minded that much that Orange is the New Black is, like, the biggest show. I, when the email sent, I was like, oh, I know that show. Yeah. I never knew what it was about, though. I just read it, and I'm like, I know that show, because right. it was Netflix fame. Mm-hmm. So I searched up online what it was about, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. And you talked about, you know, those are your goals one day. I know you've been working here at the Ryben Entertainment Studio, working with Susan, building your craft. Yes. What have you learned from working with Susan and being a part of the studio? I've learned so much, so much in three years. I've learned. I remember the first year there was modeling. She made us balance a book on our head. Why, why did she make you balance a book? So we could walk straight, and okay. it kept on falling. <laughs> and I felt bad for myself. I'm like, why can't I balance a book? <laughs> and then I knocked someone's over. I was like, <laughs> I can't. It was really hard to balance a book on our head, and we each had to bring a book. I practiced at home. I fell every single time. Oh, I yeah. was to walk, like, straight, and I just couldn't. I walked, like, we had to walk, for example, back and forth, back mm-hmm. and forth. And every time it fell, we had to go back to the start. So that was a really big struggle. I learned... She taught us projection. She would scream at yep. us saying, louder. And I'm like, got it. And after she lost her voice one, she had like this little turtle, which is, I believe, she named Uncle Ralph. And she would like <laughs> tap on it. Like, because she lost her voice okay. and her voice. So Uncle Ralph taught Uncle the class. Ralph, yeah, after. She's like, she would <laughs> tap on it. I remember that. She taught us so much in theater. My professor, Diego Chidi, he taught us improv. There were so many things. He taught us how to perform. Susan taught us so many things. She taught us how to speak correctly, not to mumble. Mm -hmm. It just really, she taught us so much. I can't even mention everything that I've learned from her. Well, that's a pretty good list right there, Agatha. So thanks so much. Uh, We wish you the best with Orange is the New Black and the rest of your career moving forward. Nice Nice to meet you as well.